This week, I decided to switch things up and work on the rig. So the last place I left you, this truck was running. At least I can move it around now. It's not running perfect and you know, over the years I might figure out some other things to do to, it, to get it running better. There's quite a few things I need to do. For now, that works. So now I wanna tackle the next thing. And the next thing, well, it's a little bit different than a truck. Yes, you guessed it, the drill rig in the back. Now, on the back of this thing, there is a 71 Speedstar drill rig. It's an old percussion style drill rig that goes back centuries. I mean, we've been drilling with percussion drill rigs for a very long time, apparently, which involves taking a very heavy piece of metal and dropping it over and over in a hole. So I do know some of the idea of what this thing needs to do, but other than that, I don't really know. There are lots of moving parts, there are lots of controls. It's gonna be tough to figure out where to start. And things that aren't even connected, like this wheel here. So I think that the best thing to start with, the thing that powers it all, and that is this Ford engine in the back. Since I know how to fix that, and that is the thing that initially drives everything else, I've decided I'll start with that. See what we can do with this engine. The good news is it was 50 steel and although rusted, still has mighty strength because something about 50 steel, it's just beefy. I don't know much about engines, but I do know this. That's a Ford flathead, six cylinder. There's a bunch of, I don't know, rat poop in here. I think I just wanna blow off real quick. Should be all right, just one big spray on the top here. Just gonna get the pressure washer and just blast all that away. In building with earth bags, we discovered our family thrived creatively and grew stronger by working side by side. We welcome you to be part of our family for this week's adventure. Nice, rat poop is blown away. That's what I wanted. I've damaged old engines in the past from my inexperience, let's put it that way. And hopefully this time I won't damage this one, fingers crossed. We'll see. I'm doing a couple things different. I want to take all the spark plugs off. In doing so, I need to label each one of the lines going to the spark plugs so I don't get them confused. Two. The last one. The first thing to come out of the mystery box is a brake cleaner. I'm gonna use some brake cleaner to spray off the top of the spark plugs. Nothing gets in there when I pull them off. The second thing to come out of the mystery box is some PVP blaster. This is because, uh, if you haven't noticed, there's a lot of rusted bolts on this thing. This will hopefully break it loose. The third thing to come out of the mystery box is, drum roll please, Marvel Mystery Oil. This I plan to put down the cylinders to hopefully break up the cylinders if need be. All right, I'm happy with that. So I'm just gonna let this set as is so everything can kind of dissolve. Uh, what's this? Sea foam. Hey, I think I might pour some of this down that to air intake. Welcome to the other side of the engine. This side of the engine is much more entertaining, as you see. First thing to introduce to you is this twisted piece of bar. Isn't that cool looking? So on this side, we have this guy, which is what I wanna loosen up. Come off there. There we go. Introduce us to the carburetor intake here. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and pour some of that sea foam down it. This is not sea foam spray, which is more for cleaning throttle bodies. Now here's the cool part about a flathead, a Ford flathead. The valves are not on the top. They are in fact reversed on the side of the engine. I'm hoping that this will spread out and, and just kind of loosen things up. What is this foreign contraption? What does it do? What is it? <sighs> Darn these things before my time! I'm still kind of learning. One of the guys who helped me tow this thing looked at the engine in the back and he talked about something very specific. And here is what the guy commented. Is that an oil air filter? Oh, those things are nasty to clean. What? <laughs> I looked it up and yes, he's right. They don't look fun to clean. I could replace it. I could toss on another kind of more modern filter, um, but I'm not gonna do it. Eh, I kind of like it. it, looks fun. Plus, I gotta experience this nasty clean out job anyway, for myself. Oh. That's nasty. wasn't very smart to remove that. Yikes. <laughs> oh, lovely. What do you got for me, mystery box? Uh, ah, foamy engine degreaser. Perfect, I think this will help a lot with getting off all that grease. All right. Filter cleaned to a degree of somewhat cleanliness, as clean as I can get it, especially down in there. So I'm happy with that. Um, I'm not gonna put it on yet because we are moving on to the next task. Oh, aha, a filter. <laughs> oh, it's this thing, oh, oil, that's right. I guess it's time for this engine to have an oil change. First step is removing the oil. Now, I'm not an expert, but usually the drain plug's on the bottom. <sighs> Wish me luck as I venture off into the bottom of the depths of the rig with an oil container thing on top of a bucket. Maybe I'll hit the hoop, eh? Okay, I'm under the vehicle. I think it's this one in the center. I am going to have to drain the oil with me underneath it. Put this up here. I think it's time to spill the oil. Oh gosh, why is it everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> why is it everywhere? No, not that. Ah! Ah! <laughs> yeah. I think I missed a spot, Jared. Oil came rushing out like a rushing race horse all over the rig. More so on the rig, though. <laughs> I was lucky. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gentle thinking, Bryson. Think with your gentle brain. Don't spill oil. Any lessons learned? Not a good idea to stand under the oil container when you drain oil. It's good. Do not fear, the oil man is here. Well, that wasn't so bad, actually. Got some on my arm. I kind of wiped it off. It really wasn't too bad. It's uh, mostly on the truck. Let's just say uh, it missed. Just a little bit. Oh, here we go, it's a little cleaner. It's now time to get the oil filter in. Those of you wondering where the old oil filter is, I already took it out off camera because I needed it to compare to the new one. That's as topped off as it's gonna get for now. I'm gonna put this on. Let's go ahead and top it off with oil. Check sea level, if you know what I mean. 
Watch out. Oh, a battery. Sweet. Back in the day, I believe they used to have six volt setups. This one's definitely been converted to 12 though, as it has an alternator, and I verified that it is a 12 volt alternator, so we're definitely putting a 12 volt battery in and we should be all right. That's all the space you get to work I'm trying to go with on this, huh? Oh, yes it is. All right, let's see where it fit. Good news, it fits. I'm just gonna kind of set it there for now, because I'm gonna test it. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Well, there's no spark, which is a good sign. Not gonna explode in my face. I guess I'll connect the terminals now. I still have the spark plugs undone, but I wanna see if it will turn over and see what happens. Uh, nothing's in gear, right? Just in case something um, happens. <laughs> I don't know, Jared. Judging that since this thing's loose, which is the gear thing, I think it's okay. Yeah, I guess I can just imagine like it turns over and then cranks something on the rig and just Thanks. We can no, add that to the bucket that. list of possibilities. All Honestly. right, are we ready? Yeah. Relay's clicking over. A whole lot of nothing. Nothing happened. My guess is the terminals are really nerdy. Um, judging by this one, I can tell you it's probably bad. So yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and clean those. And then uh, maybe that will help. We'll see. Starter. I'm gonna clean the starter connection too. Anything? Mm-mm. I wonder why. It might be that the relay, this guy, is old. Mm -hmm. Or something. Maybe he's not giving enough punch. So that's a good sign. Good sign. Sweet. Let's go ahead and see what's next in the mystery box. Oh. Oh. Spark plugs. Oh boy. It's getting dark. Hopefully we can see something. I'm going to go ahead and install spark plugs. I had to connect this battery because currently the fuel pump's powered from this battery. Ah. So let's get the fuel pump going. The fuel pump. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. This thing could fire up, Jared. Could. Ready? Yep. Does it have gas? Oh. oh. Okay, I'm gonna go check throttle. Okay. It says it need gas. Um, no, it's got gas in it. Okay, yeah, there's no throttle. So let's... It's funny, this thing's the throttle. I can't really see the throttle, but something like that. That's full throttle, which... That one's going full throttle. Hey, hey, hey! Whoa, I'm gonna get the throttle! <laughs> Whoa, the smoke! Holy crap! It's running! Okay, so throttle on. Oh! Too much. Too much throttle. Yesterday, we got this thing fired up. It was kind of later at night, but it worked. It started, it ran. Um, there's only one thing, the oil pressure gauge. Didn't show any oil pressure. That being said, for how long we ran it, I suspect there is oil pressure and this gauge is broken. I wanna make sure that those are in place and working before I run this engine much longer. I'm gonna investigate that a little bit. So, this is a wire that's just hanging out. I'm not sure why this wire is just hanging out there. I think this needs to be hooked up to 12 volts. All right, it's added in. There's only one way to find out what happens. We connect the battery. Any flames? No. Pull the lever, Croc. Pull the lever, Croc. Roll lever! Low 
pressure gauge is working. Whoa! Any oil pressure is good oil pressure. About 20. Oh, nice. A temperature gauge. Sweet. All right, the gauge is installed. We ran it a little bit yesterday, but not a lot. But we didn't put any coolant in it. Now, not a big deal. It's not like it's gonna overheat in, the, in a minute or two. I think I'm gonna just put water in it, and then we'll run it as a rinse, and then we'll dump the water out and put coolant in. All right, liquid inside there. It's time to go ahead and fire the engine up. All right, temperature gauge works. Let's go ahead and install the air filter back on there. It's a really easy thing, so I fill the oil up to that point. I'm told you put the same oil in it that you put in the engine. So, that's what we're gonna do. The fuel pump is running off the battery in the front, and I'm hoping I can get the fuel pump to run off this battery here and not the one in the front. Switch is broken. I guess I gotta remove the switch and put in a new one. We should hear a fuel pump. I hear it. We're good. Fuel pump works. Done. All right, I have done everything needed for this engine. Um, it is now fully ready to go. Do you realize you're gonna have to pick a name for the, at the end of this video, right? For I this do. thing? Deal. Okay, because there's that. been for months there's been there's been there's been so many comments about it. I'm going, I just have just ignored it for some weird well, reason. Well, because you haven't been working on it. I hadn't been working I mean, on it, but now I'm gonna have to pick a name. I have to go through them all. Yeah. And there's probably more now than there was. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> This has been a long time coming, but it's finally time to name the well drilling rig. In the last video, we asked for name suggestions, and the one I think I loved the most was Tuck. Um, it was by Deb's comment, and it was just, it, I thought it was genius. It's not only like truck, but it's also the rig got stuck. So Tuck, it, it, it just, it works great. So I love it. I think we're probably gonna go with Tuck. I really like that name. So thank you so much, Deb, for commenting about that. Thank you so much for all the wonderful comments and the wonderful names. I was absolutely a blast to read through those. <laughs> Some of them very funny. <laughs> all right, I think that's gonna wrap up this video for this week. As always, we're gonna have a Monday podcast, uh, so stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you don't wanna miss that. Also, there's merch in the shop, and the shirt of the week has to really be the well drilling rig. It's it's just gotta be, it's too good not to. Thank you so much for watching. I thank you again for being a part of our family. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you. All right, let's see what's in the mystery box. Oh, hey, look, that's me asking for you to subscribe and like this video. We'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, wanna see a Roadrunner? There's a road on her. He ran off that way. The guy who had it before that was using and operating it, he had done a lot of different things. This truck used to be an automatic. The guy who owned it before me actually switched it out. I would have never known if he would not have left the controls for the automatic on the steering wheel. That was a big hint there. He was a great fabric carrier. So, what's original and what's not original on this rig? I have no idea. Our family moved from the city to the country. Thanks for taking part in our adventure. We have new videos every Friday evening. If you would like to help us out, you can like this video, share it, subscribe, or support us on Patreon. See the links in the description. Speedstar, which is the maker of this rig, they stopped making them at the end of World War II, which was in the 40s, which puts this rig older than the truck. Well, this engine has been around since 1906, mm -hmm. these kinds of engines, which puts this rig at a possibility of being over 100 years old, potentially, because this thing could have been made in the 1920s. Yeah. Being, that being said, it's obviously really nice, so, <laughs> and probably not a real original. 
Why is it? I'm always doing this the messiest way possible. Now I know what coolant goes in this. Green. That's good to know. But we gotta wait for this to kinda dry, which will be about, eh, I estimate, eh, about, eh, about five seconds. Yeah. Now back here, there's kinda cool, there's a plate uh, that might give me some information. Oh, look at that, there's a machine serial number on here, 9479. Don't know what that means. If anybody knows, let me know down in the comments because I am trying my best to figure out all the information I can about this thing. So, to give you an idea on how many different buttons there are, there's this guy, there's this wheel, there's this guy, there's this guy, and there's this guy, which, oh yeah, forgot, there's two more. There's this one and there's this one. What do they do? Don't ask, I don't know. Ooh, ooh, that's oil all over me. Ah. 